Welcome to another episode of Whipmon Podcast. Today we're doing an English show and we are joined by Nicola Shamali. I know I have to address this. You're a fellow murder. So, Murt for Life? Yeah. Yeah. But you Murt up. Yeah. <laughs> like, we actually just met today. Yes. Yeah. Like, I saw your... I've been following you for a while on Instagram, and I saw some skulls, and I just wanted to find out about the cars and all those things. Then I thought to myself, it would actually be a cool idea to ask you to join the podcast, and thank you for doing that. So, I'm a custom artist, um, and, and most artists don't take stuff off of Pinterest straight off and then design that particular thing and put it straight onto a wall. You have to actually add your own flair, otherwise yeah. it's plagiarism. Yeah, yeah. So you have to really go into it and customize it. You've got this one with the panda, with the basins and stuff there. How long did that one take you? That one took me about four or five days to actually complete. And that's my reference image that I actually drew um, digitally before I started on this one and I changed the hair. So sometimes you'll... And this one was for which client? That's for Maloko. In Menland? In Menland, yes. I don't know what to call this. Like, zine or zine. So it's a zine. A, a zine is basically a, a small illustrated magazine filled with illustrations and then sometimes you can add descriptions or comic book styled speech bubbles depending on what your approach is to your zine and yeah then that, that's how you tackle it. Mm. So I did one on uh, the four most commercial serial killers out there that people know and love today. <laughs> <laughs> when I decided that corporate wasn't for me it was really easy for me to do the transition into my art field because mm. the doors were already open. So in college I'd already started preparing myself um, for freelance work yeah. and so it started as a freelance thing and the more I made and the more I posted on Facebook the more and more people started approaching me for it and eventually I got affiliated with a brand called Meraki Skulls. Um, I both source skulls from suppliers and then I'll also get people who bring Roland Award skulls or skulls that they've had from their husbands who shot something oh, once upon yeah. a time. The most important part of the skull art is the fact that the skull needs to be correctly cured um, by a taxidermist, by a professional who knows what they're doing because you get funguses, you get oh, infestations, yeah. you get all kinds of funny things which actually come into the skull. So if you bring a dirty skull, you know, you've got a little bit of hazardous waste on yeah. it um, and you don't necessarily want that. No. You have very specific CITES laws and protected species as well. So, I mean, I've had replicas come my way like a walrus skull, which is a replica cast of an actual skull. I have, <laughs> it's not a mural, I have a digital uh, set or series which I've done which was cartoon porn. Really? Yes, cartoon porn. <laughs> And it's called Rubber Hose. The style is Rubber Hose. Um, <laughs> rubber Hose, no. <laughs> I know you also said you're a tattoo artist. Where, yeah. where do you tattoo? I tattoo from home. So I have a tattoo studio um, on my property. Yeah. It's called Calypso Studios. So I actually have an upcoming exhibit at Fork Off Bar in Linwood on the 23rd of October for the people who would like That's to cool. pull through. Where can people find you again? Um, on Instagram and Facebook. So it's calypso.creates and it's the bones of Calypso or Calypso inked if you're looking at my tattoo page.